Okay, let's talk about the mammals. Finally, the mammals. So these are amniotes. So they have that amniotic egg. They have hair and the females make milk. So there was an ancestor back here that also had the amniotic egg and two lineages lineages diverged one lineage that led to the reptiles and that of course diversified into the groups we just got done talking about and another group that led to the mammals of which of course is also very diverse but that's not being really showed by this um this figure right here but we'll get into that don't you worry so the mammals um extant mammals today have three groups that have basically they differ primarily in their reproductive styles. So the montremes are mammals that lay eggs. The marsupials are mammals that have some kind of pouch on their body, the females, and so they have a very short gestation period. So the offspring are born at a very early developmental age, make their way to the pouch and their development completes in that pouch. So things like kangaroos. <clears throat> The eutherian mammals, also known as the placental mammals, are mammals that have very long gestation period and development of the, um, the baby occurs within the uterus. So one other thing about mammals that I wanna bring up is that they have really good hearing. And they have much better hearing than reptiles and one of the reasons for this is that we have, mammals have, um, more bones in their inner ear than do reptiles. So reptiles just have a single bone in their inner ear um, helping to transmit sound uh, from the eardrum uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the inner ear, whereas mammals have three so what's going on with this is that the in the mammalian limit lineage the bones that in the reptiles make up parts of the jaw um, instead um, evolved to become the incus and the malleus that we find in the inner ear and the addition of these two bones allows mammals to pick up sounds that are in frequencies both lower than what reptiles can pick up and higher than what reptiles can pick up. So we pick up a much greater range of sound um, than reptiles can. So that's an important uh, evolutionary um, trait we see in the mammalian lineages. Okay, so let's talk about the montremes, our egg-laying mammals. So there aren't very many of these guys, just five species. We find them in Australia and New Guinea. <clears throat> so basically we have the uh, duck-billed platypus that we are all familiar with. And we also have four species of echidnas, which is this organism right here. So we can see uh, their egg here and how very, very tiny little, little uh, baby hatching out of that egg. So they have hair, they create milk. So they do have hair they do have milk but interestingly they lack nipples so what happens is the milk gets secreted out of their skin and drifts drips onto tufts of hair that the young will then lap up the marsupials are the pouched mammals so these include kangaroos wallabies koalas wombats um, Tasmanian devils, sugar gliders, opossums, and others. So 
Unlike the Montreums, the marsupials do have nipples that will secrete milk from mammary glands. Also, of course, they have hair. Instead of laying eggs, the embryo develops within the uterus of the mother and attaches to the parent via a placenta, which is a structure in which nutrients can diffuse into the embryo from the mother's blood. We have them too. The marsupial, so the embryo does develop in the uterus, but it is born, the, uh, the juvenile is born at a very early and underdeveloped stage. So it's not ready at all to be sort of doing its own thing. So here's an example of this. So here is a possum um, that has been born, and you can see how very underdeveloped it is. And so this very, very small, you know, this maybe is maybe the size of a jelly bean, um, will crawl to the pouch, latch onto a nipple, and complete its development uh, within the safety of the mother's pouch. Okay, and the eutherians, or the true mammals, sometimes they're called. Um, also, sometimes they're called the placental mammals. Um, their placenta is much more developed and complex um, and long-lived than in marsupials, and that makes sense because the embryo is going to stay attached to it for a much longer time. Um, embryonic development actually completes within the uterus, and when the uh, offspring is born, it's ready to go. I mean, it probably needs some parental care, but it can live outside of the mother's body just fine. Most mammals that you would think of are these uh, eutherians or placental mammals. And one thing that's really interesting to look at is that there is extensive convergence between marsupials and placentals. Um, they live in similar habitats. Um, you know, when they live in similar habitats, they will arrive at similar solutions for similar problems. But um, their similar structures are not a result of uh, common ancestry. Rather, they're a result of convergent evolution. So examples would be if we look at a marsupial mole and a placental mole, right? They both have adaptations for digging and burrowing and living underground. But the similarity in these features um, is not due to common ancestry in that the common ancestor of this marsupial mole and this placental mole didn't have these adaptations for digging, right? This simply is coming from similar environmental pressures leading to similar evolutionary strategies. So there's a lot of diversity within the mammals. Um, and we don't really have the time to go into every single group here. As you can see, there are a lot of them. We're rather going to focus on and zoom in on one group, the primates, as our focus uh, for the rest of this lecture. So. I'm just kind of throwing it out there that be aware we are really um, just touching upon some of the diversity within the mammals and there's a whole lot of stuff that we're not really going to be uh, talking about unfortunately uh, if you go on in your academic career hopefully you'll get to learn uh, a little bit more about these if you, if you study uh, more uh, biology. Okay, primates. So the primates include lemurs, tarsiers, monkeys, and apes. So some features we see in the primate lineage include hands and feet adapted for grasping onto things. Instead of claws that we see in other animals, we, uh, other types of animals, we see flattened nails like your fingernails, because by the way, you're a primate. Um, ridges on fingers, such as fingerprints, and a flattened face. And depending on what group we're talking about that we see as, we're, as we sort of work our way towards the human lineage, that face uh, gets flatter and fat, flatter. Um, we have, along with that flattened face, um, an evolutionary trend we see is for a large brain and a shortened jaw. 
We also see in the primates opposable thumbs. So that means that we can touch the ventral side of each finger with our thumb on the same hand. So we have really great um, uh, dexterity in our hands. And this is something we see only in the monkeys uh, and the apes. And we'll, we'll talk about these groups. We also see the development of binocular vision, um, which allows for depth perception. And you can imagine in um, the primates have an arboreal lifestyle, meaning that they're living in the trees. So this is an environment where depth perception is really, really important. So it makes sense that this is something that the primates evolve. So we're going to talk about two major groups.